I put these criticisms to people involved in the sport. Alex Reed, nicknamed the Detonator, trains at London Shoot Fighters Gym and is a well-known figure in the world of mixed martial arts. Less known, he also dabbles in a bit of acting. I went up for a role about a month ago on Casualty and the theme was cage fighting and how brutal and underground and I just said to the director, I can do this but it's not really what it's like, you know, you're painting a really bad picture and I'm an athlete, that's what I do for a living. I know I'm an actor, I'm coming here as an actor but this is what you're, you're talking about cage fighting and it's quite derogatory and I don't feel, <laughs> I think that's why I didn't get the role. But coming back to it, I'm always defending cage fighting, I'm an athlete, I'm not, I don't even consider myself a fighter, I'm a sportsman. Street fighting or fighting something else. I used to be a soldier. That's fighting, but what we're doing here is a sport to me. Paul James is the fight promoter for FX3 Extreme Brawl, which Tim is fighting in soon and is one of the country's leading cage fighting promotions. It's a shame, really, because uh, it's a shame that people are ignorant, really. I mean, anyone can say around and say football's violent because look at the hooliganisms, hooliganisms to watch it. And, um, you know, the amount of injuries you get in football, people can be out of football with hamstring injuries, that kind of thing. You know, look at rugby, the amount of injuries in rugby. There's actually more deaths, I think, in um, yachting than there is actually ever recorded. There's never a single death in MMA. They see a cage, they think a cage makes it look very violent. I mean, the idea of the cage itself is for safety reasons. I mean, it's a stop fighter for actually falling out through ropes and actually hurting themselves. So it's actually, it actually gives it its own identity as well, but the cage is actually initially put there for safety reasons. So to anyone who actually thinks this is, this is a barbaric sport, come down, watch the sport, see the amount of families that come here as well, the kids that come and watch it as well, see the sort of sport that it is, it is a sport, and I think you actually start to learn to appreciate it. James Prince is a standby medic for FX3 Extreme Brawl. This is better legislated, there's more rules, more regulations, and this is better run than any event I've been to any kind of fight before. Grant Waterman is a familiar face in cage fighting. He's the referee for various promotions including Cage Rage and FX3. Grant says he hates it when people compare mixed martial arts to street fighting. You know, Joe Bloggs, the do-gooders of the world, they group fighting in one category. They can't interpret the difference between a street fight and something that's controlled and regulated and got a referee, time limits, etc, etc, and a padded, matted arena that's fenced around the edges to stop people falling out. They just see fighting. One thing that really annoys me, I mean, I've worked at the doors for 20 years, people who say that MMA is like a street fight, they just haven't got a clue. They're two completely different things. If you've got a street fight, even a simple thing, you take someone down in a street fight and land on your knee, you're out of the game. Take someone down in the uh, cage, it's got 40 millimetres of matting in there. The, the things you can do in a cage that you can't do in the street for safety reasons, there's so many differences to, to street fighting, it's just unbelievable. It's like comparing um, motor racing to ping pong, you know. Yeah, they're both a sport, but they're two ends of a spectrum. Kim Firehead trains and fights out of Nova Force Gym in Epsom. I'd say you, you get a lot more injuries in other sports than you would in this, like such as American football and stuff like that, you always, or rugby or whatever, there's always loads of broken bones and injuries like that, whereas this really is controlled. A lot of people see it as that because they don't know the depth of the, the, the sport itself. They don't know what it actually takes to get in there and what it actually um, consists of doing and how the rules go because people think there's no rules, but there's a lot of rules to this sport. Kim says that this sport has helped keep him out of trouble. Well, when I was younger, I was a little bit wild and stuff, and um, I was getting arrested a lot and stuff like that, you know, for for like getting in trouble. And, and I think, to be honest with you, this is a way that I've managed to contain like the rush, the buzz that you get off of it, and at the same time, not get in trouble and stuff like that. And as, as it's progressed, just things have gone on and one thing's led to the other, and now I'm professionally fighting. Pure adrenaline. I thought it was quite brutal. Sometimes I think it's it's wrong going there and like hitting each other's brains, but I don't know, guys guys like that stuff. Hurting people. A lot, a lot of it. Brutality. I don't think it's good sport. I've heard the arguments and now I think it's time to witness a cage fighting event for myself. I'm at the Rivermead complex in Reading where the final preparations are underway for the FX3 Extreme Brawl. Paul James is the promoter. We are possibly, uh, well definitely one of the UK's biggest and um, predominant um, mixed martial arts extreme cage fight events in, throughout UK and Europe. We're imagining we're going to get a crowd of between two and a half to three thousand people in season. The referee's role is primarily fighter safety but also to officiate the fights and make sure everybody adheres to the rules. 
I asked FX3 referee Grant Waterman if he ever feels pressure to keep a fight going for entertainment. Yeah, that's something that you learn over the years. There's all sorts of other factors. Some referees just think, you know, I'm there, the rules are black and white, let's do it um, by the book. But there's, there's, as you say, other factors involved crowd entertainment, TV, even the different levels of a fight. If you've got two guys who are first timers, no, I won't let I won't let two first timers take as much punishment as somebody fighting for a world title. The rules are laid down, but there is some interpretation and flexibility. Fight medic James Prince says he looks after the fighters. Just make sure they're medically fit to fight to start with and to treat any injuries that result from the fighting. As a rule, yeah, you should have at least one good one a night. And by a good one, what do you mean? Usually there's one hospitalisation on ice, however, it's never anything overly serious, it's just to be checked out because we don't have the facilities here to do it. And tonight was no different. Good evening, Reading! <laughs> Welcome to the Rivermead Leisure Complex. My name is Ian the Machine Freeman and it gives me great pleasure to be your host this evening. Welcome to FX3. Extreme Brawl number nine, The Reckoning! The second fight of the evening saw Russell Hodges unconscious with a massive cut on top of his head, bleeding profusely. The referee was quick to stop the bout and fight medics went to his care. A wheelchair was brought into the cage but after treatment Hodges valiantly stood up and was able to leave the cage on his feet. I felt very uncomfortable witnessing this bout and started to wonder if the negative preconceptions of the sport were in fact correct. The bout was ruled a no contest due to an illegal elbow which caused the wound. Ricardo De Silva says it's like any extreme sport. You know you have risks, you can get hurt, but problems like that is like when you fight the promoters get people with which they don't have much experience and then they do stuff like that, elbow on the top of the head. They know it's illegal, they're not allowed to do it and they do it anyways. And I think that's like the problem with the kind of fighters they get in the show. Because if they get professional people fighting, you know, you won't have stuff like that. Tim Radcliffe's fight was fast approaching.